Hello Hima friends and welcome to this new video. Today we will explore a bit more the beautiful and iconic weapon which in general is named arming sword. And uh, let's instantly start by adding some more information about this kind of sword. So there is an infinite number of arming swords models, but luckily for us Ewa Tokshot, an English writer deeply interested in medieval weapons, dedicated part of his life to create a quite easy way to refer to different types of swords. This organized classification is named Oxshot Typology. When we talk about arming swords in general, we end up referring to three main families of swords, which are defined by quite a different characteristic of the blade. The first one of these families is mainly represented by the types 10, 11 and partially the type 12 of the Oxshot Typology. To this family belongs great part of what people identify as a standard knightly sword or crusader sword. These swords, with minor differences from one oxshot type to the other, comes in general with parallel edges up to the tip, which is in general an almond shaped tip, again with small variations from type to type. These swords present on the other hand a variety of different pommels and hilts, and this is because they belong to a huge variety of cultures, even some of the swords which we identify as Viking swords or Norman swords are part of this category. The second family is represented by the types 14 and 16 of the Oxshot typology. These types of swords represent an evolution of the previous types, this evolution seems to be mostly related to the evolution of protective equipment on the battlefield. These two types of swords are quite different at first look. Type 14s are generally quite broad at the forte, the part of the blade closer to the hilt, and the most of them tend to be quite short compared to the other types of farming swords, while type 16s are generally slightly longer with a thinner shape. What these two types of swords have in common is the absence of the classic design with parallel edges. They generally show a blade which gradually becomes thinner and thinner the more it comes closer to the tip. Sometimes the actual shape of the blade changes, where the fuller ends, position in which a little ridge starts to appear, to better reinforce the tip of the sword while increasing at the same time its thrusting power against mail armor. The last of our three families of swords is represented by the type 15. This type stands by itself because of its own particular shape of the blade, which starts and ends with a central ridge, presenting an almost triangular blade shape which ends with a very narrow and thin tip. This blade is of course more thrust oriented and again the choice of this shape is greatly related to the evolution of the armor. Even if this shape, following our simplistic free families system which I present you, seems to be the top evolution of the arming sword, the blade results slightly easier in terms of design and far more common in the western history of weapons. In fact, it started to appear in the 3rd century before Christ and it was still in use in the 19th century. I want to add just one last thing. In this video I talk about evolution of the blade, which is true. The weapon shape is based on uh, its needs, but remember that most of these swords coexisted in the same period or have been commonly used before and after this type of swords which for the sake of simplicity I indicate as evolutions. For example the type 12 which we can see as an early type of sword which, again, partially is, was really common in the 12th and 13th century, but was also partially used in the 15th century. Ok, ok, I will stop chatting now and uh, we will start to have some fun with our arming sword in hand. So, the exercises that we see today are some solo drills which we can use to better start applying the simple actions we have seen in the past video. These solo drills will be then easy to translate in partner drills in the future videos. The first drill I present you is quite easy and can be used in a variety of different ways in terms of application. We start in our thrusting guard with our left foot leading and we thrust by stepping forward. When we end our thrust we transit to our high guard, the Guardia Alta, 
over the head, and then we throw a reverse of indinti, a diagonal downward cut, from left to right. Again, at the same time of our cut, we make a step, but this time we step slightly toward our left. The second drill is slightly harder. We start again with our thrust, but this time instead we move our front foot, the left one, slightly forward with an accessory motion. But this time, instead of ending our thrust, we feint it, changing the action in the middle. We then transition toward our sotto braccio or underarm guard. From there, we execute our reverse sotan, an upward cut from left to right. The application of this action is a feint to threaten the opponent on the inside line, which leads to a parry. The sotano aims toward the forearm and the hand, exposed by the opponent during the parry. The last one of our drills shows a longer action with three steps. We start from our underarm guard with the right foot forward. We simulate to parry an incoming attack from our standing place. We can execute the parry in a variety of ways. What is really important is that our parry prepares our second action, a high thrust. The Italians often call this kind of high thrust from the right in broccat. We execute our thrust with a full step forward. Then, from this position, we reach our high guard and we end our action with a mandrito fendint, moving forward with a full step. Okay guys, now you have plenty of information to deal with and uh, a number of solo days to train yourselves in the use of this beautiful sword. The next time I will keep digging through the history of the arming sword and I will give you the first pirate drills as well as a new series of solo drills. Remember guys, if you want to help this channel grow up, remember to click the thumb up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to help me even more, consider subscribing to my Patreon community. A huge number of exclusive contents await you. Well guys, I hope this video will help you in your practice. Thank you all for watching and uh, as always, see you next time.